observations. I know that Rrm hasn't seen Morbius. Have you, Lael? Have you seen Morbius? No, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, I won't. I, I won't, haven't seen it yet. I won't say anything. So, it's... Hey, hey, don't. Okay, let me ask you a question. Because the, here's the thing. I look at the critic rating, but then I look at the audio viewership, and it's totally different. So, would you, in your opinion, I'm just going to ask you this, and in your opinion, was the critic rating validated? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know, you know why? I mean, here's the thing. It's watchable, but we now yeah. live in a world where we got Brian Singer's first X-Men movie in the year 2000. Yeah. We're 22 years into the comic book movie renaissance. Yeah. And they're trying to build a Spider-Verse and all that. And you yeah. look at, I mean, it looks to me like, like you, you know what it reminded me of? Even though they're, they're, so there was another Avengers movie that people forget with Ray Fiennes and Uma Thurman mm -hmm. and Sean Connery. And it was based mm -hmm. on the Avengers TV series, not the Marvel Avengers, but John Peed, Mrs. Steele, uh, uh, John Steed and Mrs. Peel from the British show The Avengers. And they made a movie of it. And it looked like, because this, you know, Warner Brothers, the people at Warner Brothers didn't know what the fuck that movie was. They didn't know what The Avengers were. They didn't know. So the movie that came out was heavily edited. It looked like you got like a 90 minute truncated version of a much longer movie. And I'm sure mm -hmm. people at the studio were like, well, let's just get to it. Well, the thing with Morbius, what it told me is that. The people at Sony that want to build, they, they basically at the end of the movie, they wind, they wound up in the same place. They wound up with the Amazing Spider-Man too. It's like, oh, we're gonna have the Sinister Six come, and like you did, you tried to do that already, you know, and, yeah. and you just you fucked it up with this movie. And and yeah. there's no, you look at this and you're like, the reason, the reason yeah. what people in Hollywood will never understand is everyone thinks we, we just you see it with Star Trek. You see it with every other shared universe that isn't Marvel. The only other good one is Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Mm -hmm. You have to have you have to have strong storytellers that are showrunners that understand how all of these things work together. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, no, none of these people get it, man. And and when I watch, you know, you watch Morbius and you're like, there is no overarching person going, well, this is what we have to do to make sure this all ties together. It looks like they made Morbius, and then they decided to cut it to shit. I mean, there's no. bad ADR in it. It's it's watchable, wow. but you look at it, it's just a mess. And you're like, uh, it's inexcusable. I feel bad for Leto, Jared Leto, man. I, I really do. I, I know. Think. And when you get to the the post credit <laughs> sequences, you're like, what the fuck? You're, what? Yeah. This doesn't even make any sense. It's coming on the heels of yeah. Spider-Man No Way Home. And it's it's like probably because they finished Morbius way before they finished No Way Home. They didn't bother. I mean, to me, it it shows why Kevin Feige is so successful. So mm -hmm. Kevin Feige produced or worked as a producer on fourteen Marvel movies before the MCU. Mm -hmm. uh, fourteen include, and that's including Man Thing, which is a TV movie here in the states. But mm -hmm. if you include that, he learned what worked and what didn't work. He busted mm -hmm. his ass. So when he started the MCU with Iron Man, he knew what was up. He was already mm -hmm. a huge geek. He got it. He understood. And that's why mm -hmm. it's as successful as it is. And the fact now people are like, well, it's not as good as it used to be. I understand it's not because you don't have Captain America and Iron Man anymore to anchor it. But they're trying new things. Shang-Chi was a lot of fun. I liked Eternals yeah. more than a lot of people. Hell yeah. Everyone loved Spider-Man, even though it was part of the... It was Sony. It's still part of the MCU. And I'm sure Doctor Strange is going to kick ass. because you got. Yeah. And then we got Thor Love and Thunder. And then Wakanda mm -hmm. Forever. I mean, there's yes. still three huge Marvel movies coming out this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. which is insane. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Quantum Mania was going to be coming. Soon, yeah, so, that's yeah. that's next year. Quantum Mania with yeah. Kang. Yeah, you know, and then I mean, we're with getting Kang all either. kinds of shit. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's still working. You know, yeah. um, uh, let's see. Uh, Darth Plato says, based on what I've read, the last duel's crime claim probably did not take place it looks to me that the filmmakers wanted to play on the theme of the oppressor and the oppressed class seems like almost every movie now uh has to tap into a social binary yeah and that's the that's the perspective that i gave um of course earlier uh that darth plato at least i believe that's what darth plato is referring to okay. um in regards to this the true story um 
and of course we'll never know but um according to accounts that's what they were saying yes i i totally agree um djn says reductionism in american culture is hurting the arts so the academy is trying to stay relevant maybe as a call to purpose when does art serve versus when does art entertain that's a good yeah. question yeah it is a good question and i think we're seeing a lot of confusion about this because i think that a lot of what executives who are trying to uh sell stories so that they can be made to investors is people are going to love this this is going to be the most entertaining thing people are going to spend a whole bunch of money on this mm -hmm. but on the other end once the funding comes through perhaps the studio or or whoever is pushing this film through doesn't care necessarily about the entertainment part as much as they care about the message and so that miss you know that it's kind of like a, a disconnect as mm -hmm. to well what is the film actually what's the purpose of the film you know what is the intention of this work mm -hmm. um if i were someone who solely made work that I wanted to make political statements about, and you knew that's what I stood for, and that's all I made, you know that when you go to see a film made by me, what to expect. What but I don't do. think that you should necessarily, you know, see every single film with that same message, especially when it's not even sort of like what's their passion. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that, that that conflict, the inner conflict of I better do what they're saying and put this message in there versus what you're what the person really just wrote in just a great story this yes is, this this basically you can just see the conflict. A story that's exactly don't what? don't and when you're when you're trying to that's the my biggest gripe is that you're when you're writing you know uh a, a story to you're writing instead of just free form writing just writing it in, in a way that it suits the story and it suits the narrative you're writing where your main focus is to bypass the narrative and suit the agenda. And, and the, that's it's perfect, the problem that I'm having. Yep. A perfect example, Liel, is CODA. CODA does not have an agenda. Mm -hmm. They're not telling you that, you know, making a statement about children of deaf adults. They're not. The story mm -hmm. is about a young girl who has a dream. And yeah. boy, who can't relate to the dream of wanting to be a singer, wanting to go to a performance arts school, you know, eager to go ahead and, and see if you can have that dream come true. But your family, you know, that's the mm -hmm. conflict. Oh, if I leave my family, what will happen as the only mm -hmm. hearing uh, person in the family? It was a beautiful story. Absolutely yeah. no they weren't trying to send you a message about, you know, being aware that there are deaf people. No, it's absolutely nothing to do about that. It was just about a young girl and her dream. And it mm -hmm. came out as a beautiful film. And that's why people loved it, because it was a good story. And that's yeah. all people want is a good story to be entertained by. You know, I told, I think about like One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, Jack Nicholson and, and Louise Fletcher as Nurse Ratchet. So that movie's in basically a, a mental ward. And mm -hmm. and Jack Nicholson, who's this free spirit, ends up getting incarcerated in this. Nowadays, they would turn that movie into some kind of statement about mental illness and addiction and homeless people getting them off the streets or whatever. Well, that was just the setting of the movie. And mm -hmm. and here you have a free spirit that's that's basically a free bird that's come in to where all these caged birds are. Sure, they're damaged. The milieu is this hospital, but it ends up becoming a power struggle between the free spirit and this nurse that lords over this realm in the way she, only the way she sees fit, and she wants the she wants order, and she doesn't want this Jack Nicholson free spirit, and it becomes a battle of wills between the two of them. So nowadays, they would make the whole thing about mental illness and how societies cast these people out. Well, the movie's telling you that. The movie yeah. certainly has a it's the whole it is it is addressing mental illness on a on a big way, but the story itself is about this battle of wills between these two yeah. people and what independent thought has rather than toe the line and be a conformist. You know, mm -hmm. and and this rebellious spirit of Jack Nicholson's comes and transforms the lives of all of these men. And 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 you could say nowadays it would it would just hammer home. Well, people are mentally ill, and this is what we have to do mm -hmm. about them. And yeah. and that's what we're missing. I mean, now everything yeah. is about. And what's so weird to me 
is that the people that are writing these stories think they know better. Yeah. Like they're 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 writing a story from th- their pulpit going this is what you need to know about. Well, in One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest they didn't do that. No. You know, based on Ken Kesey's book or whatever and you had Milos Forman, one of our great directors, making a great movie that ends up being this great battle of wills and it's sure it is about mental illness and it's set in that yeah. milieu but that's not the focus of the story and what's great is you you think about what it's like to be mentally ill you think about the hospitals that are protecting these people and or they're not protecting these people all of that's there the social issues are there but at the core is still this awesome story about yeah. Jack Nicholson's battle of wills against this woman that is not going to let him be the individual that he is and is going to break him at all costs and mm-hmm. ends up doing that through electroshock therapy and all that. It's great. And yeah. I don't think, like, not to belabor a point, but I'm looking at the the, the um, commercials for the new Star Trek TV series, Strange New Worlds, and I'm like, Every single commercial is trying to teach you some lesson within the 30 seconds about the, these people have turned Star Trek into like it's it's all a pulpit. They've forgotten to tell us a story. Every story you hear people delivering Star Trek platitudes and in all those character arcs you hear just terrible. It looks to me it looks terrible. Mm-hmm. It really mm-hmm. looks I didn't think I was like I think Strange New Worlds could be good. I'm looking at it. I'm like, this is the worst shit ever based on these, <laughs> these, these things. Cause I'm like, what, who is this for? Like, it feels like, it feels like a um, reality show for Star Trek. Uh, that's what it feels like. People are, yeah, they're, they're auditioning to be on a reality <laughs> show to maybe they get hired later. It's I work so... in engineering and, you know, I've, uh, you know, been here for 20 days. It's like, I'm like, what are we watching? Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm like, I, I I don't... Have you guys watched any action adventure? Yes. It, it, it shows yes. at all? And it really looks god-awful. I hate to say it, but it really... And, and I don't believe the cast. I don't believe yeah. any of the people they've cast. I'm like, none of these people look convincing for a second. None of them. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. wow, man, you know... I don't believe I don't believe any of you. I don't believe the costumes. I don't believe the set design. I don't believe the lighting. I don't believe any of it. And well, it. I, I I wanted to say that, um, and I, I I need to get your both of your opinions on this because, um, you know, they advertise something as strange new worlds. Now I take it very literally, you know, and yeah. I do understand like there's history, there's books, there's lore. I understand that. I'm not saying I'm not discounting that. What I'm saying is they're purporting it as strange new world. So I want to see something unusual. Like, this is just me. Wow. Oh, my God. Did you see that trailer? What was that? You know, I, I want to be, you know, kind of, you know, really impressed with something that does look strange. And and I'm like, this doesn't look strange. It just kind of looks like, you know, they're traveling in space. It doesn't feel strange or new or anything like that. And I, I, I just was like, well, then just call it, you know, new worlds, but there's nothing strange about it. If they're going to make it strange, if there is going to be something unusual about it, present that. But I don't think that they should call it that if it's just about new worlds. That's all I was going to say. Yeah, no, I, I, it, to me, I'm looking at this going, all of these characters, they all look like caricatures. I don't believe... You know, they're just saying they've cut these trailers together to make it look like we're looking at it's a Star Trek trope show filtered <laughs> through the through modern identity politics. Yeah, you know? I don't even it doesn't even make any sense. The the approach and the organization of the characters, they don't feel like a cohesive unit. They don't feel like no. a team. No, <laughs> it's like, who's playing on what side? Is this a soap opera? Like it was very kind of difficult to understand what direction everybody's coming from because they are actually coming from so many different directions oh yeah i mean i uh, that's one of my problems with star trek discovery i'm like you've got michael burnham and all the people that surround her like i never feel (laughs) i'm watching anybody that was in a quasi-military organization at all (laughs) nobody acts nobody the way they talk to each other i'm like where's there's no discipline there's i don't believe and that's part of my problem with it all i mean people are are uh, i don't I don't even think the character that played Tilly, like she tends to be the brunt of where she has to constantly say things like what the fuck or, you know, um, like she had, they put her in these positions where they had had her, 
her language is kind of questionable. And I'm like, this is the woman who wants to be a Starfleet captain. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the woman who has this ambition. She wants to get ahead. You know, she kind of wants to do these things. And I kind of felt it was a disservice to her, just like as a character. It's like she wouldn't say that. She'd be following all the rules and making sure she has all her accomplishments. And, you know, everything would just be focused on that. She wouldn't care about whether someone, you know, called her incompetent. That's she doesn't care. She has to make sure that, you know, she's focused on her goal. So that kind of like snarky remarks, like it, it's not characteristic of a candidate who wants to be a captain, of a candidate who wants no. to excel uh, in Starfleet. Well, everything is so casual. You know, I feel like I, I feel like Star Trek is all about casual Fridays now. Yes, it's all casual. Where Fridays, it's like, all just casual. Like, uh oh, there's the DCM or whatever this giant anomaly that is ridiculously huge is coming to Earth, and there's, well, maybe. I, I mean, it, another thing is I, they haven't quite figured out just how big space is. <laughs> they don't. You know, they, they don't it, understand. Um, you know, uh, what is it called? Um, orders of magnitude. No, they no, don't I, understand that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, I, I, I think if you were to actually sit down with a diagram and explain how far Earth to Vulcan is, and this has been a problem with Star Trek since J.J. Abrams took over. You know, the idea that Khan could beam from his one-man one ship attacking San Francisco and beam to the Klingon homeworld. Like, bruh, come on, dude. You know, and I watch this and there's no... Uh, there's no, there's no, there's no suspension of disbelief, and I, it's just gobbledygook. And and I was really kind of looking forward. I'm like, okay, maybe strange new worlds will be good. Like, but but it's like Anson Mount is the the Starfleet captain that y you finally finally somebody's supposed to be on Starfleet. But now it's all, like everything he says, it doesn't feel like he's a real person. He's just like, here's a Star Trek captain. That's what he's playing, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm like, uh, okay, you know. Is it, it does Strange New Worlds take place in the Lost Era, or is it what what time period are we talking? No, about? No, I mean the Lost Era is between the original series and the motion picture. You know that mm -hmm. that this takes place before Kirk took command of the Enterprise. Okay. So, okay. and again, I mean, but but now that we have Lieutenant Uhura, Nurse Chapel. Doctor Mbenga, you know we've already got half oh, yeah, the crew. Yeah, that's right. I forgot Uhura was in. Was in <laughs> and, this. and Khan Noonien sings a, 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 a long lost descendant of Khan because that makes sense. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so what you're saying is I shouldn't watch this shit. Period. No. 